UltraViewer Remote Desktop Support Software. Is it safe? Is it secure? Is it a virus? Is it gonna blow up my computer? Has anybody actually heard of this software? How does the free version match up to TeamViewer? Well, let's talk about it. Okay, so before we jump into unpacking UltraViewer and taking it for a test drive, I wanted to cover a few disclaimers right off the top. Number one, this video is not in any way, shape, or form endorsed by UltraViewer. This is just my personal and professional opinions on their software. And I will say that this company is based in Vietnam. It's not a US-based company. That might freak a lot of people out, but I've used them for several years now and it's a safe software to use. Uh, it works quite well. It's basically a dumbed down free version of TeamViewer. It's very similar to TeamViewer. So if you come from the TeamViewer world, you are most likely going to like this software. I will say there are some security flaws with it that we will cover. Um, so if you plan to use it for highly secure environments, I do not recommend it. This review is solely based upon the free version of UltraViewer. So I'm not gonna be covering the paid version. So some of my callouts, they may be corrected in the paid version of UltraViewer. I don't really know. Again, this video is just based off of the free version. So without any further ado, let's go ahead and jump in and take UltraViewer for a test drive. All right, here I am on their website. I encourage you to check it out, poke around. They got a lot of good information on here about the product. If we scroll down, we can see that UltraViewer is a product of Duck Fabulous Research and Development. If you do a little research on that company, you will quickly find that it is based out of Vietnam. So like I said earlier, it's not a US-based company, but I assure you I've used them for several years. Never had any major issues with them. So another thing to keep in mind is UltraViewer is a relatively new kid on the block. It's been around for about six years. So I went back to Wayback Machine website and if you don't know what this website is you can look up archived historical pages of almost many websites along the web and just did a quick search of ultraviewer.net you can see traffic started to pick up around 2017 and we have some early traffic of 2015 so like i said it's been around for about seven years surprisingly enough i believe that ultraviewer is a relatively unknown product. There's not a lot of information about it on the internet. There has been no major security breaches with the software that I know of or that I've been able to find through research. So again, it's a decently secure software to use. There are a few security flaws that we discovered with it when we were doing our analysis on the software. I'm gonna get into that in a little bit here. So let's head over back to the website. I'm gonna go to download. And we'll grab the EXE. I wanted to show you guys. Let's go back to downloads. And we are going to scan this. And even better, let's go ahead and head over to virustotal.com. Malwarebytes is still scanning it. And let's drop the file into VirusTotal website. Okay, as you can see, vastly undetected. We did get one from Secure Age. Malwarebytes has also scanned it clean. And I would go ahead and write this one off as a false positive because, again, I've used this software for several years. It's been good, and we're getting numerous other reports from antivirus companies that the software is clean. I don't want this video to be super long, guys, so I'm not going to get into every single little detail, but I will show you a few things about it. You can check for new version. You can do about. Again, they have their contact info in here. And specifically, this is version 6.5.31, the latest version at the time is recording. Activate license, blah, blah, blah. Okay, yeah, that's it there. Settings, we'll get into options in a moment. What languages? Okay, quite a few languages you can change to. File, view logs, close remote desktop, restart UltraViewer. Okay, so pretty self-explanatory on those. 
On the left side here, you have your little contact book, and if you create an email address, essentially you'll sign in and you can save your Ultraviewer contacts. So let's head over back to this button right here, which is a up and down arrow. And we got two columns here, allow remote control and control remote computer. So if I wanted someone to remote onto my computer, I give them my ID and my randomly generated password. Unattended access, we have some options here. You can check mark this and run UltraViewer with Windows. So that basically makes it run as a service and it's gonna run on startup. Down here, you can create a custom password and this does require administrative privileges. What is a custom password? Well, when you connect to this ID, you will not need to know the randomly generated password. You can use your own custom password that you created. Um, another feature here, allow turn on remotely. Not something I've gotten in depth with, but hey, the feature's there if you wanna explore that. Here, you can click these little double blue circular arrows. You can generate a new password at any time. Um, you can set a password length if you want stronger passwords. You can set it up to eight characters. You can also disable random password. So one thing, one security call out I have with this, if you have UltraViewer installed on a user's computer and they want to remote in from home, you can basically hide the fact that there's a generated, automatically generated password, but they can quickly come in here and just turn it off or turn it back on by four digits and then they can just remote on from home. So that's kind of a concern. Um, it would be nice, UltraViewer, if you could block this and essentially turn off a random password and allow the client to only and solely rely on the custom password because the custom password is non-viewable. The user cannot see it. So as a quick fix and not a sort of weak security here, you just set it to, if you don't want the user to see the password, just set it to disable random password. And if they're not very computer savvy, they won't see it. But again, that's weak, weak security in my opinion. It's not something that <clears throat> you would rely on. Um, and in some environments, the password shown here may not be a issue. So no problem there. Okay, so let's head over to settings, go down to options. Okay, we got connection. So this is kind of interesting. You can choose between a couple ports here. You can set it to auto detect. The default is 443. Uh, you can set it through a proxy. So if you have some proxy settings, sure, and you have a valid reason to use it, sure, use the proxy. Remote control, you can show the remote wallpaper. A lot of remote support softwares will disable the remote wallpaper for connection performance reasons. Uh, maybe you have a really fast internet connection on both endpoints, right? The one you're connecting from and the endpoint you're connecting to. You got a lot of bandwidth. You could probably just show the wallpaper while having issues. Security, um, disable random password. Um, that is a little bit what we were looking at over here. Same deal, you can just access it from the options. When I press the X button to close UltraViewer, this is saying what you action you would like it to take. You can always minimize the system tray, always ask me, exit immediately, do not ask me. Um, I don't really use that feature much. UltraViewer on Windows Logon screen. So always show UltraViewer on Windows Logon. This is an interesting feature. So let's say you're at the login screen, you'll have UltraViewer displayed at the top right corner here and it'll show the ID and the, the password, which is kind of a concerning from a security perspective. You may not want someone walking by and seeing that information. Um, interesting feature to include there. It can be turned off. You do have to run UltraViewer as administrator. So just right click, run as administrator, options, access it again. And as you can see, you can just don't show on the Windows logon screen. I typically turn that off, so I'll have it set to do not show. Blacklist and whitelist configure. You can set up blacklist and whitelist. Do not allow these ID numbers to connect to your device. So if you know the ID number of another UltraView from another UltraViewer instance on another computer, you can add it here. Um, I don't really use that feature too often. Standard permissions of remote users allow get file from my device. So you can turn that off and on here. That's basically the file transfer. Access run UltraViewer with Windows. Kind of what we were seeing down here. Um, you can just 
set it right here on options as well. Automatic restart on crash, that's in the paid version. Uh, yeah, I'm presuming if Ultra Viewer crashes, you know, you can check this to automatically restart itself. Not a huge deal in my opinion if it crashes on you. Number one, softwares that are well built probably really shouldn't be cra crashing very often. So this is kind of concerning. It's like, oh man, does your guys' software crash so much that you had to put this feature in there to automatically restart itself? That's kind of weird. I don't know. Don't really care much about it. Again, <clears throat> if the software did crash, I'll just manually restart it myself. No big deal. Chat settings. Um, you have some hotkey adjustments you can make here. Enable chat suggestion. The chatting is pretty straightforward. No big deal. You do get a chat log that you can access. And one thing I noticed that's sort of weak on the logging is, um, okay, so you can change the store log there. Uh, what I was gonna say was you can delete the logs. So that's a little concerning. That may be something that can be locked down in the paid version of UltraViewer. So again, it's just very basic logging and it's non-protected essentially. So yeah, it can be deleted, which is, not very secure once again because you know let's say a user finds this directory and they start deleting logs that's may not be something that you want to do want them to be able to do extra exception handling resume if possible do not show error turn on dll hook ultra viewer updates you can turn auto updates on or off there filter and move to short clipboard don't really know what that is again not super worried about it like I said, guys, this is a rough overview. Um, it's not, I'm not gonna get into every single detail about it. I just wanna show you the core functionalities of the software and some security vulnerabilities that I discover with it. What I am now going to do is I'm going to minimize my VM there and I'm gonna launch Ultra Viewer from the host computer. And I'm going to connect to my virtual machine. Take it for a little test drive. So the password, let's get a randomly generated password. Four digits. Okay, four zeros, easy enough. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Okay, so all I did was get my partner ID, plug in the randomly generated password. Let's go ahead and connect to partner. Okay, here I am on my VM. Pretty straightforward. Now, one thing I will say that I'm not a huge fan of <clears throat> is there is no option to lock the keyboard and mouse on the remote endpoint. It's kind of a standard uh, feature with remote, remote support softwares. So here um, you have dual monitors. If there's more than one monitor, you can switch between monitors on the endpoint. You can select quality custom options, auto select. This probably has, again, to do with your um, bandwidth. So if you have a really slow connection, you might wanna do optimized speed. Screen size, you can do best scaled. Um, stretchable is cool because you can maximize and it fills up your screen. If it's not on stretchable, best scaled, it's just gonna letterbox, you can get the black bars. So sometimes if I wanna go full screen, I'll just go to stretchable. Computer sound. You can set there, or you can turn it off. Uh, I think that's to hear the remote endpoint. Show remote wallpaper, again, you can turn that off and it will go black. And that might increase your performance on your remote support performance. Show remote cursor, if you wanna see the mouse, or I guess if you want your user to see the mouse moving around, you can turn that on. Actions, you can send control alt delete. Let's say you're at a log on screen and you need to unlock the computer. Obviously you can send control alt delete from actions. You can do remote, uh, remote start from here on the actions screen. You can capture part of the screen, capture full screen, record video. Look at this. Ah, it's only available in the license um, version. Okay, no problem. And then I'm um, presuming if you go to open containing folder, it probably has the video that you recorded in that folder. Um, so you can do screen screen captures here. So let's talk about the chat feature now. So if I'm here, okay, let's go ahead and test out the chat feature. So chat comes up over here. 
as you can see, I can chat them and they can chat me back. Blah, 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 and some more blah. Very cool. All right, so let's get into some of the logging now. We can check the log here. And I think that I can open this with Notepad, a UVCL file. I'm not even sure what that is. Yep, you can open it up with Notepad. So, obviously, like with the chat log, you can come in here and just edit away. Blah, 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 blah. File, save, close that out, open it up. So users could potentially make stuff up. Like, hey, Johnny said this to Brenda and he cussed her out. So what do the logs say? Yeah, the logs are totally editable. So that's not gonna be any fun there. And then also I'm trying to find where the access logs are stored. Here is the connection log. Again, this is something that you can edit. Uh, Spider-Man remoted onto your computer via Ultra Viewer ID. Okay, let's save it now. Oh, look at that, saved no problem. So yeah, the logging is weak on it. Um, definitely don't use it for logging. So another thing <clears throat> I noticed is that if we take a look at Ultra Viewer here and we go to or not ultra beer, sorry, this is a uh, glass wire. Kind of like a basic packet sniffing tool I use. It's a really useful tool. I encourage you to check it out, but it falls outside the scope of this video. But I wanted to show you, we can see where ultra viewer is connecting out to. So if we hover over it, we can check the host in which it is connecting out to. So we got some uk host here we have an ultraviewer.net server and that's the one in vietnam we can also see the ip address so this is you know probably one of their ultra viewer servers right okay cool okay so i wanted to show you guys another potential security vulnerability i discovered wasn't too excited about it so let's go ahead and do some packet sniffing while we are connecting with ultra viewer I'm going to go ahead and fire up Wireshark and I'm going to jump on my Ethernet connection. But what I did was I went to options here, settings options, and I changed the port to 2112. This so it's a little easier to capture what UltraViewer is doing. And let's go ahead and start capturing. So Wireshark is filtering on port 2112 right now. There's nothing happening. But as soon as I click connect, we're gonna get some data in there. Okay, so one thing that concerned me that I saw here in the packet capture was a lot of TLS version one here. If we sort by protocol, Scroll down, we got a lot of TLS version one communication happening here. Basically what's happening here is their server is the source communicating back to my computer over TLS version one. So that's a little concerning because TLS version one is deprecated. At the time of this recording, the actual latest version of TLS is 1.3 though TLS version 1.2 is still widely used and accepted. And I am curious as to why this is using such an old deprecated protocol. If we take a look at the transport layer here as well, we can see TLS 1.0 being used here. So this is a concern to me. They should be using the latest version of TLS to connect back to their servers. If we dig into this a little further, I don't want to harp on this for long, but from my Ubuntu server, essentially I can run some TLS version checking commands. And what we can do is check for different versions of TLS that the server may be answering on. So in this case, I have the functions 3 to .net server 
over port 443 and I am doing a query for TLS version 1 and I'm getting no certificate no client and I'm getting no TLS version shown here if we go to TLS version 1.2 and check for that we do get a response here on the SSL session that shows TLS version 1.2 however we get no certificates and I was doing these checks earlier guys and that's what led me to start doing a packet capture and seeing what Wireshark saw interestingly enough that is when I started seeing these TLS version 1 TLS version 1 protocols being used so yeah not too excited about that but just as a reference point if we run a query for TLS version 1.2 against my website for example you'll see what a healthy session looks like so as you can see we get quite a bit of information back we can see the protocol being used is 1.2, which we did see on the UltraViewer server as well. However, the difference is, aha, we can see all my certificate data, and we are not seeing that with the UltraViewer server. Well, I think that's going to do it for UltraViewer, guys. I hope you enjoyed this video and you are much more informed about some of the cool stuff and features about UltraViewer as well as some of the security limitations with it. Whether or not you wish to use it, the choice is up to you. Hopefully UltraViewer sees this video and makes some corrections to some of the um, call-outs I had in regards to disabling the remote user keyboard and mouse, being able to lock that out, and some of this logging um, deletion vulnerabilities, some of this TLS 1.0 stuff and we'll see what we'll go from there again i don't know if the pro version addresses some of these issues it's possible but who knows they may be working hard to update some of these issues um again leave a like please subscribe and stay tuned for the next video guys take care